Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. GMT. And welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Before we get going and jump into today's charts, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself after I graduated from university. I joined a City PLC consulting firm and left with some friends to uh, go on and successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup that was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. So I essentially had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase began to change, I started averaging down into losing positions and eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I but not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual, really focused purely on financial gains, to becoming process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. However, once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of time. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, <laughs> delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels and complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to technical clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide uh, technical daily trade setup videos for about two or three markets on a daily basis that, where I'm actively tracking opportunities. And I share those through the Ticknell TradingView account. I'll post a link for that uh, at the end of today's presentation. I also run Ticknell's e-mini strategy group where I post a daily uh, trade plan 
giving my pre-market thoughts for the New York cash trading session for the S&P 500. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have offered nearly 7,000 points of profit since we launched the group in April of 2021. Second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram Group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the New York Cash session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Again, I'll post links for the uh, tick mill for the trading groups, uh, both the Facebook, Telegram groups, and that trading view account link at the end of the session. Okay, let's jump into today's chart. Before we get going, as always, I would ask if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box. I won't be answering them in real time. I'll come back to them at the end of the session. Also, if you have an instrument you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my uh, in my presentation, you can also post that into the chat box. And I will uh, I'll come back to that again at the end of the session and give you a view on um, on the charts. Uh, what I would ask you to do uh, to for, for your benefit, really, is, uh, is if you post the time frame as well, uh, just so we can get uh, a better read on what you're looking at and where I see potential opportunities. So coming to the charts, we're starting with the S&P 500 using the E-mini futures contract. I've uh, been trading this from both the short and the long side this week. Had, uh, in the trading group, in the Ticknell trading, uh, sorry, in the Ticknell telegram group yesterday, we, uh, we got in at 39.64 uh, on the long side, still holding long positions, and then we start trailing up some stops uh, as we head into the cash session. Ultimately, what I'm looking for today is the potential for a pullback versus 40.60. That's going to be my uh, my line in the sand as we head into the cash session. And I would anticipate we could see a pullback into the, uh, the 40.12 to 4015 area is a key level of interest for me as uh, as we head into the cash trading session today and I'll be uh, like I say updating the group with the uh, the pre-market plan on that uh, shortly after um, after today's uh, presentation but I think at this stage we are heading for a move that should see us test into the 4100 area is my ultimate expectation given the current market structure we have this internal trend line support coming in now at uh, 39.80 so today it would really take a break of that 39.80 to suggest that we are just trapped in a range here between 40.50 and the 3900 low and if we did take out that 38.80 and we retest yesterday's lows I would anticipate there that we would uh, we would potentially break down and trade lower back into 39.50 39.40 which is my next area of interest I have these marked up alerts uh, just for uh, personal ease but uh, 30 40 60 is the first area of, uh, of resistance if we get through there 40 75 is the next area I'm looking at but like I said I'm looking for price to grind out and eventually get into this uh, this 4100 area and then we'll see uh, we'll see where we are looking at the Nasdaq obviously the Nasdaq has had a decent run um, the reason for the weakness that we saw yesterday in the markets was the move that we saw uh, post the Microsoft earnings. What's important with these tech earnings at the moment is really the um, the issue with forward guidance. I, I think I mentioned this last week that the earnings, as as usual, are likely to come broadly in line with expectations. Obviously, uh, uh, EPS and revenue uh, is, our expectations are being lowered because of the current environment we're in, but. Ultimately, I'm expecting the earnings to come in broadly in line, but what's going to be key to the market response, and we saw this on uh, per post the Microsoft earnings, is that the we're looking for some uh, upbeat guidance. Anything that focuses on the downside with respect to guidance is going to weigh on markets in the near term. So we had that really sharp pullback in terms of the post Microsoft earnings, came into a support zone, 
11,600 and buyers step back in. And if you're trading this intraday, it's important you want to have up, uh, you know, I, I was, I, I told my guys to uh, pay attention to Microsoft intraday yesterday because that any intraday turnaround or strength that, that was started to come into Microsoft would feed into the rest of the market because it was essentially those Microsoft earnings that, uh, that dragged the market down. So we saw a turnaround in Microsoft. We saw bids coming into the market, into that 39, 70, 39, 60 on the S&P 500. I alerted the group to the fact that there were a huge amount of contracts being traded in and around that area. And that suggested to me that had the potential for near-term base, which turned out to be the case. So with respect to the NASDAQ, I've been looking for a move. Obviously, we had Tesla earnings last night. I'm long Tesla. I've had a really good run in that uh, at the start of this year. Uh, Tesla's trading up about 7% in the pre-market. So that's, going to, that's leading to a bit of strength here. But we've got a bunch of data coming out in about uh, 20 minutes, US GDP. And so we'll pay attention to that because that's going to obviously inform as to where the Fed are likely to be. We've got a Fed meeting next week. So uh, I'm looking for any move up into the weekly R2 and this trend line resistance, weekly projected range resistance, just above the 12,000 level. I think we could see a pullback there. Certainly, if we don't see new highs here in momentum, we're getting that momentum divergence. I think that could set us up for a bit of a corrective move. And I'd ultimately be looking for any pullbacks now into 11,800 in this internal trend line support. As long as we find support there and buyers step back in, then we've got an equality target and, and the range resistance really at this stage, 12,316 monthly projected range uh, resistance above at 12,330s. So that's kind of, if we get if we get that move, that's broadly going to co um, coalesce with the idea that we test those 4100s uh, with the S&P 500. Dow Jones, <clears throat> triangle set up here. I'm looking for us to test 34,119. So any pullbacks into either the pivot here, 33,600, or if we get a deeper pullback into daily projected range support and this internal trend line support, 33,490. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. And we're looking for a test of 34,199, 34,200 is the objective for the Dow Jones. Moving to the DAX. <clears throat> so the DAX is grinding out. We are looking for this high volume load on the weekly time frame, 15,500. And we're setting up to put in a test of that. So with the DAX at the moment, what I would be looking for is any break through now, this triangle resistance. So let's say 15,240. I'd be engaged on the long side there using a stop uh, below this trend line support, targeting that 15,500. I'd be booking some profits there. We've got some momentum divergence developing. And I think from there, we'll see another corrective phase unwind in terms of the DAX. Ultimately, I'd like to see move back into this trend line support here, uh, 14,700s. Well, we'll have to see where it is if we get this test into the 15,000. But that's what I'd be looking for is a pullback into that trend line support, these prior highs. And then we look to see if we can build another leg to the upside for the DAX. <clears throat> Nikkei showing some decent strength exceeded our equality objectives. Now I'm looking uh, from last week. So if you remember from last week, I suggested that we had, uh, we've exceeded the 161 extension of that swing. So 27,200. So that alerts you to the idea that the move we're seeing at the moment has impulsive qualities. And so the next objective was going to be the internal equality move here which we've tested 27,530, pretty much to the tick here. And we're seeing a bit of consolidation. So I want to be long on any break through that level. So through 27,550, let's say, uh, we're going to target then 27,700. As pullbacks remain supported back into those prior highs, I'm actually looking for 27,000 920 as the next upside objective, which comes coincides with our weekly high volume node. So 27,900 on any breakthrough, 27,550 is the trade there. The Nifty had been the, the standout performer. Uh, last week, we were looking for trend channel resistance to hold and the pullback into our 17,660s. Potentially that move is setting up now. So I'm going to be watching for that 
And as we get into that area, which is the 61.8% retracement of our prior impulsive advance, I watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a break of the corrective trend channel, the high volume node back through 18,130. And then I think we can re-challenge prior cycle highs en route to new cycle highs is the setup there. Now, if buyers don't step in this region, then we can be looking at a much deeper pullback. You can see here on the daily time frame, the equality objective versus the swing structure there has us testing 17,220, which also coincides with monthly projected range support and the 78.6% retracement of the prior advance. So that's the next area I'd be looking at if buyers don't step in at the 17,000. 640s. TLT, the bond market, the bond proxy I use, still haven't been able to take out the 109.50 resistance. It, at, at any point that we do get a close through there on, a, on the daily time frame, I will be on the long side looking for the equality objective versus our swing low here, 9920s. We are looking for a 116.83 test on the upside there with TLT. Whilst we hold resistance here at the 108.70s, there's still the chance that we get a pullback now in to test the trend channel support uh, just below the 100 level. But again, that's another area where I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, same upside objective, 116.80s. Nothing uh, to do on the short side unless we get a daily close back through our pivot there, our potential B wave low at 99.20s. Let's move into foreign exchange space, dollar index, <clears throat> still in the wedge looking for 170 level to get tested, which is the projected uh, ending diagonal pattern to the downside. Below there, we have weekly projected range support, 150. So I'm watching any test here. And as long as we maintain the momentum divergence, i.e. new low in price, no new low in the momentum study, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to play this on the long side. On the daily time frame, I look for 103.40s trend channel resistance. It's it, The potential is now, without any meaning, meaningful data surprise, we have PCE out tomorrow, which is a, a favourite of the FOMC in terms of gauging inflation within the committee. Unless we get any major surprises, so, you know, 1% uh, plus or minus outside of what's expected. I'm thinking we're probably going to grind this out and not do much until that FOMC meeting next week, which is likely to be the major, next major catalyst for these markets. But any move into this area, we'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns and I will be looking to play a correction into that trend channel resistance 103.40s. Euro dollar, similar setup really obviously the inverse to the dollar index. Look, I'm looking for any move into 109.50s. As long as we maintain momentum divergence, I'm gonna to look to play a correction. Often what happens when you get these move, when you get these markets that are slightly extended heading into a major catalyst, the day before or 48 hours before the news event, you see a correction develop. So I'd be looking for any grind into 109.50s. I'd be watching the bearish reversal patterns as long as we maintain momentum divergence trade on the short side just looking for a correction initially then targeting the high volume area here at uh, the 10820s and then certainly post the FOMC bullish reversal patterns i think we trade 110 uh, we also have the ECB next week as well um ultimately on the daily time frame and anything above 10650s at the moment I see as support and I'm thinking we trade higher in terms of euro dollar and I think ultimately on the daily time frame with the dollar index uh, whilst this trend channel is respected I see us looking at for a move down to the 98 level ultimately as the uh, the, the downside objective for this uh, this dollar index move so I'm just looking to play counter trend corrections and then I'm looking to realign with the trends sterling choppy action this week in sterling political uh machinations continue with the uh with the conservative party so and the data has been mixed at best so we're seeing a bit of back and forth here but ultimately i think we get a test of the 12460s uh weekly daily projected range resistance 127 extension there as well uh, from there i watch the bearish reversal buttons and i think we get a pullback in sterling and what I'd be looking for with Sterling here on the daily time frame, let's just update this move. 
I'd be looking for any pullbacks into 121.50s. That's the level. 121.50s, any pullbacks into there, bullish reversal patterns, and we want to be looking to build the long exposure to ultimately target the 128 weekly trend channel resistance. Dollar yen. <clears throat> Looking like it might make a test here of its trend channel resistance. Any move into this 130, 130, 130, 50 area, I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns engage on the short side. I'm looking in the interim for a 125 test on the downside. It's going to take a close back through 132.84 to suggest we have a more meaningful low in place. Then we target range resistance up to 134.60s. Dollar CADs. Obviously, we had rate decision yesterday, uh, not doing much of anything at the moment. We still have that 129.70, a quality objective here on the daily time frame. Uh, so what I'd be looking for is any close. Well, no, this is actually what I would look for. What you want to see is a break down through, we'll test the trend channel supports and the weekly projected range supports. Then any move back into this area from below, so we look for this price support to act as resistance. We've been chipping away at it. Any move there that gets a bearish reaction, I'd engage on the short side, looking for us to break down. And we've got that target to the downside, 129.70. Aussie dollar. Looking for 71.50. Looking for bearish momentum divergence, new high in price, no new high in uh, the momentum study. I think we can see a pullback there. Three wave correct move. I'm looking for a move into this internal trend channel support just above 170. From there again, if we get that move into the FOMC, then we look to engage on the long side bullish reversal patterns. And uh, next upside objective 7250s. But like you know, uh, or those who are here regularly, uh, I am actually looking for 7340s, which is the bigger equality test to play out. So we're looking for an entry into that move. We also have the weekly projected range resistance coming in at that level as well. 7340s is the zone that we're going to ping, that we're looking to target on any pullbacks here. I'm going to move on quickly here so that I can fill in some questions. Gold, I've been long gold. I covered uh, covered position this morning and I'm looking then for a pullback to play for a re-entry into gold. I see further upside, but like I say, we've had a decent clip here to the upside out of the uh, the back end of last year into the, the early part of this year. I think we should see some position squaring ahead of uh, ahead of the FOMC. And then if uh, if, they, if the FOMC are cons or, or deliver that 25 basis point hike next week as markets are pricing, I think there'll be an opportunity to re-engage gold on the long side. I'm ultimately looking for uh, quite, quite a significant move higher in gold this year. Crude oil is another one I've been trading from the long side. I cashed in that position as well this week. I'm now looking at the opportunity to re-engage here. So if we can get a close back through 8150s, I'm going to put another long on here using a stop just below 79. 40s. Next target on the upside for me is that 83.50 equality objective. If we can get through there, then we can start to think about 87, uh, no, 85.70s as the next target on the upside. So I'm watching for this four hour close through this corrective trend channel resistance to play on the long side in terms of crude. Took about 300 pips out of that move when we retested here. Uh, Got in at 74 and 77. And like I say, cashed out this morning. Uh, let's just wrap things up here with Bitcoin. So what I'm looking for in Bitcoin is any move back into 22,200. We want to engage on the long side and we are targeting a move up into test this weekly re resistance, 25,380. Uh, yearly pivot 26,600 and then I think we could see a pullback there in Bitcoin to build a, a longer term base for an extension to the upside but the immediate opportunity is watching any pullback into 22,200s uh, watch the bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side and see a lift up in towards that 25,000. I will just leave you with the euro yen there's a nice setup I spotted here this morning in the euro yen using the pitchfork entry method. So I'm looking for any pullback into the 140 level. 
Watch for bullish reversal patterns here. Engage on the long side. We've got an equality objective, which sits at 143.40. So I'd be risking 100 pips, let's say there, to play for 300 on the upside would be the, uh, the game plan there. Okay, so that concludes this week's whistle stop tour of the market. So what I'll do now is open up for any questions. Can you please give us a free trade idea? I just did give you one. I've given you plenty <laughs> throughout the entire presentation. If you're paying attention, you'll see where the trade opportunities are. Any other questions? You can also, uh, Titus, uh, let me post this link for you. Well, for everybody, but uh, if you want to follow along with my trade ideas on a daily basis, here is a link to follow. <clears throat> Seconds. Bear with me and I'll give you this link. So there are trade ideas I post pretty much on a daily basis there with entry levels, targets, etc. And for those who are interested in receiving the daily trade plan for the S&P 500, I will uh, post the Facebook link. All you do is request access and you'll get uh, join the group and you can follow along with my daily trade plan. And if you are interested in learning more about the Telegram group where I give real-time trades, et cetera, you can, uh, you can PM me through there for details. Are there any other questions? Thanks, Philip. Okay, guys, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wrap, uh, I'm gonna wrap this session up here. Sure, I, I'll tell you what I'll do guys, um, for those that are interested in learning more about uh, what I do, I will give you, uh, I'll provide you here with my email address. And you can uh, you can message me directly. Uh, uh, I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thanks very much for your time this week. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.